what is the point in pursuing this at this stage? It is just harm to everyone, especially to Jew uh, and to our family. But the, the harm is also affects uh, protections and uh, long-standing protections uh, that have been intact for hundreds of years in the United States, and they are now at great risk of being fundamentally undermined. One could argue that this this uh, indictment already, just the fact of the indictment, is already very gravely undermined, but we shouldn't take it any, any further. We should just drop it. The only thing that really could somehow go some way to mending the harm that has already been done is to drop the case. Well, we know from the Australian government's um, pronouncements uh, over over the years and more more and more intensely over time um, that they have have put their position to the United States uh, that the Julian should be free and on the on uh, Valentine's Day this year, uh, they also got the backing of two thirds of, of the Australian Parliament. The mandate of the Australian government is very clear, and uh, Julian has enormous support in Australia. And um, so, uh, over time, the Australian government has become more and more. Uh, forceful and clear that this is what, what is expected and of course um, Australia is a very close partner to the United States and I think it's really uh, significant Australia's support for Julian uh, because until until this administration, until the Al Albanese administration, the Australian government was basically abandoned him and complicit in, in his persecution, just through their silence and facilitation of what was happening, of what was being done to him. Um, and the shift from the Albanese uh, government uh, has, I think, has a decisive um, impact in, in the way and the viability of, of getting away with it, basically. You know, this is a political case, and um, the United States should abandon the case. And when Julian's home country is <coughs> calling for his release, it makes all the dis difference in in a in a case that is completely political. Uh, that being said, Julian's not free. He's not free, and he's been in prison for over five years, and um, the Albanese government has to push harder and, uh, and secure his release. It's just whatever it takes, he needs to be free. And I think it's clear to everyone in this room and everyone who's been observing this that this has to come to an end. Um, and of course, I'm, I'm very grateful to what the Australian government has uh, done to date, but it, it needs to, to continue um, advocating for his release. I think, I think uh, with every development there is, um, with all the world support there is, the, the the world leaders who have come out, um, Brazil and Mexico, but also Germany, uh, with the um, Chancellor of Germany, Olaf Scholz, saying Julian should not be extradited. Every time there is a pronouncement like this, it strengthens uh, Julian's case for freedom and it strengthens Australia's ability to advocate for him. By the US government saying we abided and worked with criminal. And secondly, I've written to the US ambassador here in London 
asking for reassurance that I wouldn't be arrested for having been the editor of the Warlocks. Um, what, what does that mean for journalists? Under US law, he cannot be tried in absentia. Uh, he cannot be tried in the United States unless uh, the UK agrees to extradite him there. And that's why uh, today's decision was so important. Uh, hopefully, the UK will not extradite him to the United States. Um, if the United States were ultimately to obtain extradition, and if despite all of the reasons that you heard why they should just drop the case, they decided that they wanted to proceed, um, it, it, it is a terrifying prospect, as far as I'm concerned, uh, for journalists, not just in the United States, but all over the world. Uh, the notion that the United States can prosecute anyone anywhere on the planet who has the temerity to report on U.S. national security issues has a tremendous chilling effect on journalism. And uh, the very fact that this prosecution has been brought and that Julian has spent five years in prison uh, for doing his job and informing the world of very important newsworthy information, including the fact that the United States has committed war crimes, uh, that already has a tremendous chilling effect. And so I hope uh, that the U.S. government will walk away from the prosecution. If they don't, I hope they might hope they're not extradited. Uh, it's not just uh, for Julian and his family, but obviously they're most immediately impacted. Uh, it's for journalists all over the world and for us as citizens who depend on journalists to be informed about what the government is doing for political in our name. One last question. Yeah, Birgit Maas, Deutsche Welle, German TV. I would like to understand whether a new Home Secretary could reverse the extradition order, and if you think that that could be likely to happen under a new Labour, possible Labour administration. Okay. The question is to you. <laughs> well, well, to be honest, uh, since I don't know the answer, I'm probably the best person to try this answer. Uh, if, technically, can the, uh, the decision to actually be reversed? I think that it's so. Um, but uh, whether it's likely under a new administration, uh, I am not entirely convinced. Um, the, uh, Possible future prime minister of this country uh, had a direct sort of input into the process of this case. It was treated as life as a prosecution. So uh, I don't want to speculate on, on, on that, but uh, we are seeing political changes in this country in the next year in the United States, in the next half year. And uh, it is uh, uh, creates uncertainty. And I just want to reiterate what has been said here before, what I've said, that uh, the only solution that is just logical is to end the case, to drop the case. And the signaling from today is, is, is obviously in that direction.